Hi everyone, welcome to Woolen Spinning. My name is Rachel as always, and I hope you are enjoying your summer. We are here up at Big Bar Lake in uh, the Caribou. It's in a little bit further north from where I live in British Columbia, about five hours driving with um, a truck and trailer, so we're not super, super fast. Anyways, I wanna thank you for joining me here. For those who know British Columbia, you might know where Big Bar Lake is. Um, it's just a little bit past Clinton. So if you know where Clinton is, you know where we are. Anyways, we're having gorgeous weather. The boys are out um, floating on the lake here. Nora's coloring at the picnic table behind me. And I'm just going to record for a couple minutes and I'm going to bring you along throughout the week. We're going to three different places. This is our first stop. And uh, I'll bring you to our second place and our third place and it'll make up an extra show um, this month, which is really exciting. So I hope that you are enjoying being with us. The first thing that I wanted to share with you was some socks that I cast on in the truck on the way up here. I've actually knit quite a lot and you guys will recognize this yarn as soon as I show it to you. It is the crazy bright yellow vegan cashmere um, that I car hackled up with my Crafty Jacks uh, Superwash BFL in the colorway Harvest. Both happen to be this really uh, bright, bright yellow. And I've knit this much on the socks. I'm knitting these on 2.25 millimeter needles on my Chow Goose. And I also started my other pair of socks that's out of my Superwash BFL and nylon from Sweet Georgia. This was a Sweet Georgia colorway back in November of 2016. It was called False Creek. Um, unfortunately, I'm knitting these also on my Addy Turbos, on my Sock Rockets, I think these are called. These are also 2.25 millimeter needles, but I actually abandoned knitting these because um, it's making two too loose of a fabric and I need to go down to a two millimeter needle. So I'm gonna focus on working this week on my yellow socks and these will eventually get ripped out and I'm gonna to have to re-knit them when I get home. So I'll maybe take these on our trip in August because we're gonna be heading to the mountains and um, it'll make a much denser fabric. But as soon as I started trying these on, you can see how much they stretch and uh, the fabric needs to be quite a bit denser. So that is what I'm working on while we're up here at Big Bar lake um, in between swimming time. So thank you for joining me and I hope that you will uh, join us in a couple of days when we go to our next stop. So that'll be coming up next. What do you want to say? Um, you have to look up because the camera can't see you. Um, I like my polka dots. <laughs> you like your polka dot sweater? Sweater. <laughs> what do you think about um, Quinnell? Good. It's good? What do you think about... 10 Mile Lake. Good. Yeah? What do you think about the bridge we walked over yesterday? Good. Do you have anything else to say other than good? Um, I liked it, the, the water feels real. The water what? The water feels real. The water feels real? Oh, when we were in the lake yesterday? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah? Did you like collecting things in the water? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what and else? I like it, the wheel. Oh, the water wheel that collects the gold. Don't, don't push it because it makes it shake. Was it the water wheel that you thought was really cool? Mm -hmm. From Do you remember when it was from, the water wheel? No. 1860. But when did it work? In the 1860s. Oh. Yeah, they panned for gold with it. Okay, do you have anything else to say? Say, what do I like to do camping? What do you like to do when you're camping? Want some lemonade? My. One sec, I like James. My. Mm -hmm. Floaty. You're floaty? Yeah. You and like I floating. like swimming. Don't touch, don't touch, James. And I like swimming. You like swimming, yeah. What else do you like? Um. What else do you like? My hair. <laughs> oh yeah, I braided your hair. No, my hair, my color of my hair. <laughs> okay, that's that's lots of things. What do you like about camping, James? I can't really see you. What do you like about camping, James? Swimming. Swimming, yeah. What else? That's um, my thing. Floaty. And your floaty, yeah. Um, I like my smoothie. I love it when we go camping because we get those fuzzy drinks. 
Oh, the, <laughs> the sparkle waters. And yeah. We get these two mm -hmm. that I filled up with mm -hmm. some, some water. juice. Yeah. And look, sometimes we get um, these cans these that I mushed water. up. <laughs> um, uh, sparkle water, and mm -hmm. I love them. Mm -hmm. Can you not do that? <laughs> <laughs> I like so, my hair. Yes, Nora, we know. Stop kicking, because it moves the camera, see? And I like bike cameras, my dad. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all? That's all you like? Oh, and building? Cool. And right. I like biking with my dad. Cool. Okay, let me record Here's the rest. Here's your lemonade. Okay, can I record the rest of the um, show? Yeah? Hi, everyone. So here we are at uh, Ten Mile Lake, which is just outside of Quenelle, British Columbia. So this is getting up into the Caribou now. We're about an hour south of Prince George, which is where I was born. Um, and we went into Quenelle yesterday. We had to get some groceries and uh, we took a walk. There's a gorgeous um, loop of trails that go around the um, town. And uh, we walked part of it, went across a pedestrian only bridge, which was very cool. And um, yeah, just generally saw the sights. It was, uh, I haven't been to Quenell in, in quite a while, so um, I didn't remember it as well as I thought that I did, but um, it was good to go in and see and refresh my memory. And of course the kids thought it was so cool that there were so many logging trucks going through the city because the highway goes right through. So every two seconds, logging truck, mummy, logging truck. So it was kind of fun. Um, I have actually been working on my socks. So I finished um, the sock that I showed last time on the way up here from um, James. And mommy finished her sock. Yeah, okay. I finished my sock that I, I was working on that um, um, I had started. So Is I'm going to do what mine? Chrissy um, on Snappy Stitches no. often does. Wait, she she puts it on her hand to show. Bottle. And uh, the kids are also right here water. and they're quite excited. So um, excuse the sort of side noise. Anyways, I finished oh. and turned the heel. These fit absolutely perfectly. And they're all marked for um, making the second one because I didn't want to um, risk not having them exactly be exactly the same. So I have started the second one. I started the toe. I try to start the second sock immediately because otherwise I find I get quite um, sort of that second sock syndrome and I don't want to start it. I had mentioned last time that I had put the blue ones, the um, Sweet Georgia, so mommy's BFL, making pale. BFL and nylon, I had put them aside because the fabric is just too loose. It's not making a really nice fabric. And I'm going to have to find my two millimeter needles when I get home. Um, unfortunately, Quinell is too small and doesn't have a shop to find needles. Um, if we were going up to Prince George, there's a couple of knitting shops in Prince George and I could probably get needles up there, but we're not going to do the drive up there because we've got a, a, a bit of a drive tomorrow. So, Anyways, those are done, and I'm hoping that I can get a, a significant amount done on these over the next few days. Probably not get them finished on this trip, but I could probably make some serious headway. Are you done? Almost. Are you guys going to go for your bike ride? And my birthday. What? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, James. And I'm four. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Are you guys going? Go, oh, James. The other thing that I've been working on is the Sunwalker by Melanie Bird. This is a pattern I've been working on for quite a while, and actually I've been working on it when we've been at the campsite um, rather than when we're driving. Um, not really for any other reason except that I've been wanting to get those socks done while we're driving, and it's kind of a mindless knit that I can sort of sit there and work on my socks and, and look out the window while we're driving. It's getting long, this thing. And I'm almost six. Next week I'm six. So this is that hand spun sock fiber that I um, had spun a while ago. You guys sort of know about this, but um, here's the ball. There's over a thousand yards of yarn here. Um, according to the pattern, I should use most of it up. And I've actually made a serious dent in, in the center pole ball, and of course it's collapsing in on itself, so it's, it's sort of hard to tell. It feels like the ball isn't getting any smaller, but it is quite a bit lighter than it was. Um, and this is really a lot of yardage when you stop and think about it. I suspect this is a good 200 yards right here. Um, and the pattern has several lace charts 
Um, I think it has, yeah, it has uh, four charts that you work your way through. So you work through A, B, C chart, and then you do A chart again before you do a lace border section. So um, it's a significantly sized shawl. It's been on my list for a really long time. I think Melanie Berg does just awesome patterns. And I really, really like um, her aesthetic and um, how she wears her shawls and how they are modeled when they're done. So um, this is, uh, um, you know, making its way. It's, it's striping a little bit because of the way that I dyed the fiber and the way that I spun it. But I don't think in an unpleasant way. And I think once it's on and once it's being worn, it'll actually um, bring a little bit of interest to the shawl, especially in this um, textured section that's um, really, um, not not any more complicated than uh, than moss stitch. It's just that there's a whole bunch of stuff that you have to do at the beginning of each row. So um, um, it's uh, coming along. It the rows are getting long now. Um, I have to rep do this textured repeat. Um, I can't. It's like 25 times or something like that. And I've done it 19 times. So I have to work through the chart another four or five times. Um, I can't remember exactly how many times. I don't want to give away too much of the pattern because it, it is a pay-for pattern. But it's coming along and it's going to use a lot of yardage, I think, by the time it's done. Because I was a bit worried that I was going to run out of, that I was going to finish the pattern. I'd have a ton of yarn left, but that's definitely not the case. It's, it's going to be a pretty significantly sized shawl with a pretty hefty amount of yardage that's going to get used. Um, I'm knitting it on three, I was going to three, say 3.75 millimeter needles, but I... Oh yeah, I am. 3.75 millimeter needles and I'm actually using my Addy Clicks for this. Um, I'm knitting my um, socks that I was showing you on my yellow ones um, on Chow Goos and it's funny because they're both metal needles but they have a different feel to them and of course it's a different size because one's 2.25 millimeter needles and these are 3.75 millimeter needles. I just love my Addies. I, I really like the Chow Goos for, for sock knitting as well but it's they have a slightly thicker cable. And my Addy Clicks, I just love them. Um, I know everybody has their own personal um, taste in needles. I really love my um, um, my wooden needles as well, my likey ones. Um, sorry, there's mosquitoes. But um, yeah, it's just so nice. I feel like I'm, I always come home when I use my Addy Clicks. Um, they're great for, for uh, this type of knitting that's relatively fast. So that is what I've been working on for the last few days. We spent uh, yesterday, mostly afternoon, after we got back from Quinell um, at the lake, and it was lovely. Um, we went swimming, the kids floated around on their floaties, and Mike and I just stood in the water and chatted because we have to watch the kids, but um, it was just relaxing to just stand and visit. And uh, I've been having lots of good coffee and lots of walks. We've been, both been clocking like 15,000 steps on our, on our watches every day, which is really great. Um, I find it really hard to get more than about seven or eight thousand steps a day at home. Um, by the time I'm, you know, with the kids and um, going to the gym and just all those different things, I find it hard to then get myself motivated to go out for a walk, and that's really what I need to do. So, to get those extra steps, and I always, I'm really, um, I really admire my friend Greta because she always um, is pushing herself to get her steps every day, and um, I think I feel better when I get more steps. So, and I've been taking Charlotte for a walk while the kids have been going back down to bed in the evenings. I've been taking her just around the loop because she can't do very much because of her hips, but that's been really enjoyable too. And I think I need to do that at home, um, even if it cuts into my knitting and spinning time. So everything cuts into our creative time, doesn't it? <laughs> Anyways, we've been having a great time. We're halfway through our week and um, we've got, we're going down to Green Lake next. Um, so we're kind of on our way back home now. Um, we've gone as far north as we're gonna go on this trip. and. Uh, We'll be heading down to Green Lake and then actually we'll be um, jet setting home quite early on Sunday morning because unfortunately I have to work a uh, night shift on Sunday night. It meant that I got out of a day shift next week which happened to be James's birthday. I accidentally double booked myself so they moved me off of that shift onto a weekend night so it was a small price to pay to not have to work on his birthday because as you can tell from the commotion around the camera a few minutes ago he's very excited to turn six and to go to grade one so anyways i'll talk to you in a few minutes and we at that time we'll be down in green lake so happy spinning and knitting everyone I wasn't expecting it to be as like slippery. <laughs> well, you for it up first. So. I mean, I grew up with dogs, so I'm not afraid of slobber. Oh, no. <laughs> this is how it is.
Hey, okay, I really want to walk right barefoot in this dress. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I guess I should do something. So if you're putting something in there and it's bubbling like that, is that going to oxidize the... A little bit, but it's kind of hard to avoid it. Yeah, it's kind of like an impossibility, yeah. Yeah. Here's things sinking here, floating. I'm not surprised. It's the yarn from... <laughs> <laughs> it's been fighting you the entire way. It's been fighting me the entire way. Although, it was easy to card. Ah. Yeah, it was super easy to hand card, and it was super, super, super oh. easy to spin the singles. Oh, nice. It was good. just winding them onto the weaving bobbins. I needed bigger weaving bobbins mm. for the springiness of the singles. Right. So, that it was my fault. And it's a learning opportunity. Do we have a totally. timer? How long did you want to go for? Why don't we do this first one for 10 minutes? Okay. And we'll see. Cool. I suspect I'll do two or three. Okay. Although I have to watch the time, so that may dictate. <laughs> when my mommy was spinning that yarn on the on the small bobs, it got tangled. Yeah, that's no good, eh? Uh, rude yeah. yarn. It was super rude. Okay, this might float a bit at the beginning. Why does that not surprise me? <laughs> well, and it should be better than the next one. It's, it's Suffolk. It's like super full of air. Yeah, and it's woolen spun. It's three ply, and it's it hasn't been washed yet either because I finished it this morning at 12.30, which is technically afternoon. <laughs> and it is now... I thought you were going to say like 2.30. <laughs> no, oh my goodness, I wouldn't have been able to stay awake. It reabsorbs the oxygen, yeah. expands, and gets trapped in the fiber. Ah, nice. nice. So that's why it crocks over time, and it will... That's why your jeans get the fade marks, yeah. because yeah. it doesn't actually adhere to the fibers. It's sitting trapped inside, and eventually over time it works its way out. Right. Cool. Yeah. It's gonna be super gross. What are we doing? <laughs> he, I was gonna say he's clearly not. He's concerned. super stoked on it. Yeah. <laughs> this will be a sound off video when it goes wherever. Um, no, I'm hoping that we can keep the sound on. <laughs> we are currently talking about the dog. <laughs> so no, no four letter words. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can say like, keep, keep it PC for several reasons. Yeah. I yeah. can say keep, keep it PG. as many times as I want. <laughs> <laughs> and lock and luck <laughs> and love and live. They're all L words apparently today. I'm just afraid the one starting with other gods. No, <laughs> squeeze it a bit underneath the surface and then sort of pull it out, squeeze it at the same. You'll, you'll get the feel of it. Mommy. Yeah, you can do it a little faster if you want to too. And then you can, yeah, it's not. And then, yeah, pull it over to the next one. There that is definitely and not the reaction I thought gently. was the hot. <laughs> and then you can watch as it oxidizes. Yeah, it's already going blue fast. Wow. Wow. And then how much do you want to squeeze it out before you just let just it just hang? squeeze. It's not that big. Kay. So then you can dunk it into the water and give it a good swish. That'll so help oxidize it too. Okay. Coming with you. So is there a problem because that's hot and this is cold? with wool. It's stopping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but totally. that would be something you'd have to be That's something to be I was careful hoping you would have warmed up by now. I mean, it's not like freezing cold, but it's definitely cooler put than some warmer water in it. the other one. Yeah, cuz it that BFL cross yeah. might yeah, just lock it would felt. Yeah. Okay. Does it even have to be hot when you're using it? Or? Um, to get it reduced, it has to have a certain temperature, but then it, it can drop. So okay. It still works. Like, even if it's a bit hot, it might stop huh. working okay. a little bit, but it can And then we're just going to lay it out here okay. to yeah. hang out for 10 degrees. minutes. Yeah. Yeah, we can put nice. some hot water in those. Do you want me to go boil the kettle? You need that hot? Huh? Oh. I don't know. What do you guys think? Like how I mean, much? That is how much difference hotter. is how much difference is it? Quite a bit. That would be like as hot as you do dishes, if not hotter. And this is like drinking water temperature. Uh, maybe a boiled kettle and the drinking water temperature combined would probably be yeah. less of a shock. Wow. Yeah. Go. And there's marbles in it. <laughs> Why are there marbles in there? Um, because indigo was really finicky to get to actually mix with the water. Mm. So um, before I put the root 
just careful. Okay, there you go. So, um, just put it on the ground. So, before I put the reducer in for the stock, then I just blend it up with marbles. It just helps to blend oh, it in. You don't get as many chunks. And oh. keeping the oxygen out of it. It doesn't matter at that point because there's haven't been reducing it. And so, so it's not until it goes into that solution that, it starts that, it's, to... that you have to start worrying about the oxygen. No, once I put, um, so I put the calcs in to raise the pH, yep. then I put the indigo in and then blend it. And that point, it's not dying anything. It doesn't matter how much oxygen's in there. Okay. Then I add the reducer mm -hmm. and then that's gently stirred without disturbing it. And that oh, okay. then pulls the oxygen. Oh, okay. And so the color stripper and stuff that you put in before this helps to you pull and like deposit the color so that it moves into the fiber better or? No, that was just another use for it. Oh, so okay. yeah, color stripper, it works, strips colors and it puts in to go in. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah? It cleans that. Um. You need to do it. When you're done picking up train pieces, you're done. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, Brio okay. train tracks. Yeah. Oh. $80 worth of No. <laughs> But I know what you mean. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Ruger, you turkey. I know. <laughs> Thankfully, those train tracks are still available because I, I bought some a couple months ago. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I had used the dirty side. Yeah, out. no, that's good. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I put it on the right hand. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you get to live your life how you want. <laughs> you know, if you want to make it extra hard for yourself, by all means. <laughs> oh, you're preaching oh, to the Jess. choir here. Let me tell you. So freaking funny. Oh, okay. what on earth? It's like neon. Yeah, that's amazing. Speckled. That is yeah, crazy. You can oh, it that's that sludging that uh, oh. Kelsey was talking about that'll yeah. wash off, or or in subsequent dips it'll even. I know oh, I wish. Look at that oh. Yellow. oh, that's so beautiful. You yeah. can just watch it. If you could just yeah. like get it to stop right there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That'd be an amazing. Oh my goodness, look at it. I remember just watching Heidi and oh, it even has a little <laughs> it's like a sand dollar. And look at it darken. That's crazy. That's amazing. That is... Yeah, I sent in our booking the other day and we can set it out at one on the Sunday. Nice. Okay. Oh, like 10 below, bro.